So we're back with more of Ask the Hammer with Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham Wealth Partners. Uh, Jeffrey, welcome. Thanks again for having me. So as I mentioned, the inbox is filled with questions from readers, and I've got a, I think what might be a hard one for you. I'm hoping it's a hard one. So the reader writes, I became the owner of what used to be called an American Century Gift Trust Fund when I reached the age of majority. I now want to sell the fund or exchange it into another fund, either at American Century or somewhere else. Will I have to pay capital gains tax on the sale or exchange? And if so, what is my basis? Sure, uh, that's, a, that's a really good question. And you know, without seeing precise statements or uh, you know, really being able to, to speak with the individual asking the question, it's hard to say definitively. But what it sounds like is it sounds like this is a, uh, an UTMA account or an UGMA account. Sometimes uh, you might hear this referred to as like a Uniform Transfers to Minors Act account. And that's why uh, what, what kind of tips the hand there is that the, uh, the, the reader says, I got this account when I reached the age of majority. And that's typically what happens there. So those type of accounts are, uh, are accounts in which an individual can place a gift, but the dollars in that account, while they belong to the beneficiary of that account, in this case, your reader, until they reach the age of majority, which varies from state to state, the account is essentially controlled by some sort of a guardian or custodian, oftentimes a parent, but it doesn't have to be. It can be a grandparent or uh, even an unrelated person who establishes that account for the beneficiary. Now, when the dollars are, are put into that account and there's a, a purchase, the purchase amount becomes the basis. So in this particular instance, it's possible that maybe you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, uh, for argument's sake, $10,000 was invested in this account. The gift of $10,000 was made. It was in tax terms known as a completed gift. So it belonged to your reader. And then that $10,000 was invested in this American Century investment. And we'll just imagine that over the last you know, hypothetical 10 years, it's grown to $18,000. So we've had an 80% increase. It's now worth $18,000. The initial investment was $10,000. Well, if that's the case, then when these assets are sold, the gain would be that $8,000 difference between what it's worth today and what it was worth when it was purchased. Now, one couple of important notes here. First off, uh, sometimes investments have dividends that are automatically reinvested over years, and that can actually increase the basis. For argument's sake, if you had $10,000 of uh, investments that produced a $500 dividend, and that dividend was automatically reinvested back into the fund, that $500 dividend now makes your basis $10,500. Uh, and that's one of the things that is very often missed on tax returns. Uh, I've seen people pay much more in taxes than they should because they haven't considered those reinvested dividends over the years. So something your reader may want to take yeah. into So it sounds complicated if I could interrupt you. If someone gave someone this gift trust or an UGMA, or UGMA at birth, let's say, you've got, what, 18 or 21 years of statements to go back through to find out what dividends were paid? Yeah, it can be, it can be very difficult. Yeah, in those situations, now, uh, hopefully, the custodian, the actual custodian of the account, in other words, the investment house, uh, hopefully they have kept track of that somewhere on old statements. Uh, from time to time, it, you, know, you, just, you don't have that information, and it becomes uh, kind of a scavenger hunt and a best guess, if you will, uh, and, and you try to recreate basis somehow, take a best guess as to what it was uh, when it was initially purchased. But in an ideal situation, there's going to be some statement available to show that purchase a number of years ago. At the very least, you know, in the recent years, you can ask for back statements and figure out how much of those dividends, if they were reinvested, actually got reinvested into into that fund or whether they put aside in cash. So th there's probably at least some information available, hopefully more. Uh, but yes, in, in certain situations where that, um, you know, the other thing you could do is just ask the person, right? If they are the ones who invested it for you, uh, hopefully they're still alive. If that's the case, then you could just say, you know, um, you know Aunt, Aunt Susie, uh, what did you put into this account? And I, what was your initial investment into this right. account? And you know, hopefully, and Susie at least remembers what that was. And that can, again, give you at least a, a starting point uh, for, for, um, for, a, for a basis amount there. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. The second thing is your, your reader asked the question about exchanging the investment. 
and within the same fund family, et cetera. It's important to understand that we're really talking about two separate things here, right? One is the tax treatment of the investment. The other is the actual investment itself. So in the past, you know, today, there's more access to mutual funds without what is called a load. In other words, an upfront large commission than there was years ago. Uh, but it's possible that this was purchased at a time where that wasn't the case. And so the ability to change a fund in the family often meant that if you wanted to switch from, let's say, investment companies fund one to investment companies fund two, you could do so. It, might, it would be taxable, but you wouldn't have to pay a new commission to go from the first investment to the second. Right. But here, if, uh, if your reader wants to, let's say, take that money sell it and you know put it in a, a brokerage account to buy stocks where they just want to go and buy a, a no-load fund somewhere else. Uh, that's certainly possible. And the only advantage, if you will, to staying intra-fund might be, again, to avoid those uh, upfront commissions, which have largely been, uh, there's now a lot more investments available without those upfront loads than there were certainly a decade and, and definitely two decades ago, depending upon how old this investment truly is. Yeah. My read of the exchange part of the question is whether the exchange would not create a taxable event as, as, as would it be a in-kind exchange, for instance? And Yeah. So this is not going to be like a 1031 exchange. You're essentially going to sell one fund and, and buy another. Uh, so again, your edge there is no commission, but in terms of you know, tax liability, you would, you would want to plan to pay taxes on those gains. Yeah. So my guess is that this could come as a big t surprise to someone who may have experienced large gains in their portfolio sure. since, uh, since, since the original purchase. Yeah. And, and certainly it's going to obviously depend on the, you know, the type of investment that it is. But if it's any sort of, you know, growthy stock fund yeah. and they've had it for the last 10 years, I mean, it, it's possible that it could be up, you know, several hundred percent depending upon you know, what the investment was, especially if dividends have been rest, reinvested over that time. So it could be a significant tax hit. Uh, the good news, though, for someone who may have, let's say, just got this fund, they just reached the age of majority, is they may not have much other income. And so you are eligible to have a, a decent amount of capital gains each year. If you are your own filer, if you're filing single and no one else can kind of claim you as a dependent, you're not subject to uh, kitty tax rules, et cetera, uh, you could actually have a, a fairly substantial amount of capital gains taxed at the the zero percent bracket. If you're in the ten or twelve percent ordinary rates, then your capital gains, your long term capital gains rate, is zero percent. So oftentimes those are ideal years to liquidate those investments if you're thinking about a change before you go on and get you know a a, a more significant job where you are uh, you know earning enough that you're going to be phased out of of those amounts. Yeah. Well, um, I, again, I, I only have two hammers. <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So I'm going to say you nailed it That's again. It. Nice. All right. <laughs> well, All right. send us your questions. We want to answer them. Yeah. So, yeah, send us our, your questions. And, and of course, we're going to answer them. Tough ones, easy ones, uh, intermediate term ones. Whatever you got, send them our way. We're happy. And I'm happy to have pose these questions <laughs> to Jeffrey. <laughs>